Hello everyone, welcome to the video lecture series of cloud computing. So this uh, particular uh, course content which I am going to, to cover today is actually related to the syllabus uh, affiliated to uh, the uh, Dr. Uh, APJ Abdul Kalam Technical University Lucknow and I am Surbhi Sharma, Assistant Professor in CSA Department in Ajay Kumar Garg Engineering College. So uh, let's start the topics. Okay, so uh, the contents which I am going to cover today is the layered cloud architecture design and the NIST cloud computing reference architecture. Okay, so we will actually try to cover uh, these two topics. Okay, so let's start with the layered cloud architecture design. Okay, so uh, this layered cloud architecture design. Uh, is actually uh, the basic architecture which was introduced for the cloud computing and in this cloud computing model we can actually view the cloud uh, services uh, in the stack related to the various layers so from this diagram you could clearly see that at the initial level we have the cloud resources okay and which is actually managed by the system infrastructure. Above that, we have the cloud hosting platforms, uh, which is managed by the core middleware. And above that, we have the cloud programming environment and tools. And above that, we have cloud applications. Okay, so uh, we will try to unfold these layers one by one. Okay, so let's start with the cloud resources. So guys, uh, as I have told you that it is actually possible to uh, view the uh, uh, cloud computing and into a layered view, okay, starting from the hardware appliances to software systems as I have uh, shown in, in the figure. You can see starting from the hardware, from the very basic layer, uh, from the very basic level up to the software applications, we have the um, cloud resources, uh, hardware, and then at the top level, we have the software, okay? So guys, these uh, cloud resources are actually harnessed to offer computing horsepower, which are required for providing services. And often, this particular, this particular lower layer is actually implemented using a data center in which hundreds and thousands of nodes are stacked together, okay? And this cloud infrastructure uh, can be heterogeneous in nature. It could be heterogeneous in nature. Why? Because you could see that uh, there are variety of resources here. You could see the uh, storage database here. You could see the computing power CPUs here. Okay. So it is heterogeneous in nature because it has a variety of resources like clusters and even network PCs can be used to build it okay and moreover uh, the database systems and other storage services can also be the part of this particular infrastructure okay that is why we say that this uh, is actually heterogeneous in nature because it offers various different kind of services okay so you can see uh, the cpu here you could see the database uh, storage and everything all the services hardware uh, resources you could uh, view at this particular uh, layer which is managed by the system infrastructure okay so uh, uh, above that you could see the core middleware guys okay so the physical infrastructure this physical infrastructure is actually managed uh, by the core middleware so here you could see the core middleware this core middleware is actually managing the system infrastructure okay and the main objective of the core middleware is to provide an appropriate runtime environment for applications and to best utilize the resources okay and at the bottom of the core middleware at the bottom of the core middleware you could see the virtualization uh, technology okay so uh, at this 
bottom of the core middleware stack, you could see the virtualization technologies, which are actually used to guarantee the runtime environment customization. It also guarantees the application isolation, and it also guarantees the quality of service. Okay, so uh, this at this particular la layer. Uh, at this particular level, we have the hardware virtualization, which is the most commonly used at this particular level. Okay, and the hypervisors actually manage the pool of resources, and they expose the distributed infrastructure as a collection of virtual machines. Okay, so this is the important core of any cloud computing architecture because it. Is the layer which actually provides the virtual machines, which actually provides the um, virtualization technology. Okay, so hypervisors manage the pool of resources and they expose the distributed infrastructure as a collection of virtual machines. And by using this particular technology, it is possible to finally partition the hardware resources such as CPU and memory and to um, virtualize the specific devices. Thus, meeting the requirements of the users and the applications. Okay, so the core middleware uh, actually manages the physical infrastructure. Okay, and uh, this is the uh, layer. This is the stack which actually provides the virtualization technology, which is the core of any cloud computing uh, services. Okay, so guys, after that we have. Uh, Basically, uh, uh, concept of the uh, uh, this IS. IS stands for infrastructure as a service. So, guys, the combination of the uh, cloud hosting platforms and the cloud resources, both these um, together in the combination, uh, can be classified as infrastructure as a service solution. Getting it? The combination of cloud hosting platforms and the resources is generally classified as the IS solution or infrastructure as a service solution. This IS here stands for infrastructure as a service. Now you could see that uh, with the IS here it is also written as IASM. So M here stands for the management layer. So what we can do is we can organize the different examples of IS into two categories. So number one category is IS, which actually provides the management layer and the physical infrastructure. But here this ISM only stands for the management layer and it provides only the management uh, layer. Okay, and uh, this management. Uh, layer this IS with the management layer is uh, often integrated with other IS solutions that actually provide the physical infrastructure and it actually adds value to them. Okay, because uh, when you will use this particular IS with the management layer, you will be needing different uh, physical infrastructure to add value to your um, services to provide it to the customers. Okay, so uh, the one who is using IS. Only uh, the IS it is providing the management as well as the physical infrastructure. But uh, if somebody is just using IS with the management layer, then uh, uh, he or she has to use different physical infrastructure also um, among uh, with this IS uh, with the management layer. Okay, then only um, it will actually add the value to them. Okay, so the cloud hosting platforms. And the cloud resource resources together, they are called as infrastructure as a solution. Okay, so uh, then we have the uh, this middle middleware or user level uh, middleware you could call it. Then this is the middle layer you could say because what we are doing we are calling it a layered cloud architecture. Okay, and we are actually examining and we are viewing the cloud computing. Uh, architecture in terms of different layers, which is stacked one above the other. Okay, at the bottom layer we have the cloud resources, uh, which is actually managed by the system infrastructure. Then we have the cloud hosting platform, which is managed by the core middleware, and together the cloud hosting platform and the cloud resources are called as um, the IS, that is infrastructure as a solution. And above that we have another stack, uh, which is called as the uh, platform as a service. 
okay so basically what happened is why we uh, need this particular stack what happened is uh, earlier we talked about infrastructure as a solution so what infrastructure as a solution is providing this is solutions are actually uh, uh, suitable for designing the system infrastructure okay but it provide limited services to build the applications okay it is providing the infrastructure but it is not providing the limited services to build the application okay so such kind of services is actually provided by the cloud programming environment and tools so such type of services which are actually uh, required um, by the users for building uh, the uh, uh, programming environment for building the uh, programs for that purpose there is uh the requirement of this particular uh, cloud programming environment and tools okay so these kind of services uh to build the applications are actually provided by this particular stack okay and the range of tools include the web based interfaces the range of tools include the web based interfaces some uh, command line tools and frameworks for concurrent and the distributed computing okay and the users develop their applications specifically for the cloud by using the application programming interfaces which are actually exposed at the user level middleware okay so how users are developing their applications for the cloud by using the api application programming interfaces and those apis are exposed at the user level middleware okay so that is why for this reason this particular Uh, approach is also known as pass or platform as a service okay because these services offered to the users uh, is a development platform here rather than an infrastructure earlier what we are providing as a service here we are providing the infrastructure like we are providing the cpu we are providing the storage we are providing some networking okay but here uh, this at this particular approach when we are talking ab about platform as a service then this particular uh, service is offering to the user the development platform it is not offering the infrastructure rather it is um, offering the development platform okay so pass solutions uh, generally include the infrastructure as well as you can see this line is starting from here and it is going till here it means the pass solutions generally include the infrastructure as well which is bundled as part of the services which is provided to the users okay and in case of uh, pure pass in case of pure pass only the user level middleware is offered so so uh, here you could see that in this case uh, when we are talking about pure pass in this case it is uh, this line is starting from here and it is ending till here so it is only offering the user level middleware okay so pure pass is just offering the user level middleware okay and but, and uh, again when you are actually using it it has to be complemented with a virtual or some physical infrastructure like when uh, we are making use of infrastructure as a service with the management layer then it is complemented with some another is uh, solutions for this layer but when you are using a uh, pure pass again it has to be complemented with some virtual or physical infrastructure okay but uh, this pass is actually covering uh, the um, infrastructure as well okay so uh, this is the middle layer or the middle stack which is uh, uh, actually providing uh, the services to the users for building the applications okay and these kind of services are actually provided by the cloud programming environment and tools okay so the cloud programming environments and tools are actually um, providing Uh, the uh, customers or the clients the services to build the applications okay that is why this approach uh, at this layer is also called as platform as a service okay because the services which are offered to the user is a development platform okay so mm, next we'll move to the top layer so what this top layer is doing so this top layer is actually um, uh, providing 
uh, the reference model which contain the services which are delivered at the application level okay so this this particular layer this particular layer is actually providing the application so you could see here it is written as cloud applications okay so this is the top layer of the reference model and it contains services delivered at the application level and uh, it is most commonly referred to as saas saas or software as a service okay so saas stands for software as a service and in most cases these are web based applications that rely on the cloud to provide services to the end users okay so um, so guys uh, what you can infer from this the uh, actually the host horsepower of the cloud which is provided by the is and the pass uh, solutions actually allow independent software vendors to deliver their application services over the internet okay and uh, uh, this saas is the one who is actually providing the user interface um, and the applications to the clients okay so uh, so you could uh, just take the examples of the gaming portals which everybody is using nowadays or you could take the example of any social networking sites so such kind of applications uh, which strongly use the internet for their core functionalities and they rely on the cloud to sustain uh, a large number of users such type of applications actually belongs to this particular layer and the best example is the social networking websites and uh, the gaming portals okay so uh, so this is all about the layered cloud architecture design okay and one thing more here it is written as adaptive management and autonomic cloud economy what does it mean okay so uh, when we talk about the cloud computing or cloud services then uh, the cloud services should be provided to the customer in a way so that they can meet the changing requirements of the client okay so we could say that the services which Uh, the cloud providers are actually providing to the clients those services should be uh, elastic in nature that should cater the changing requirements of the user okay or we could say that uh, the cloud services should be adaptive in nature okay so uh, the that is why it is written here as adaptive management when the cloud providers are providing the infrastructure as a service or platform as a service or software as a service to the customers then that should be in the adaptive way that it should cater the most important characteristics of any cloud um, computing environment elasticity okay so to um, cater that requirement it should be adaptive in nature and that adaptivity should be uh, favored by the autonomic autonomic cloud economy okay okay it should be autonomic and it should be automatic uh, when uh, the um, customer is actually uh, changing its requirement suppose uh, the customer requirement for a particular storage is a limited for a a uh, particular time when uh, the actually customer is starting uh, its business okay at that time the requirement is increasing okay and when the uh, business grows day by day that requirement for the storage and for the computing will increase okay it will increase obviously so uh, that uh, requirement should uh, be catered properly and uh, the service provider should uh, Uh, follow this adaptive uh, management for uh, providing the services to the customers okay so uh, this all this layered cloud architecture design along with the infrastructure as a service and uh, platform as a service and software as a service give a new concept of everything as a service okay so i'll just uh, uh, quickly get to that so uh, what is everything as a service so the uh, what happens is the reference model which is actually uh, described in the uh, layered architecture it introduces the concept of this everything as a service so this is one of the most important elements of any cloud computing because uh, the cloud services from different uh, vendors uh, uh, and different providers can be combined 
to uh, provide a completely integrated solution which is actually covering all the computing stack of a system the platform the infrastructure and the software okay so uh, this is providers uh, can offer the virtual machines when uh, where the uh, pass solutions can be deployed and when there is no pass need for the uh, pass layer then it is possible to uh, directly customize the virtual infrastructure with the software stack needed to run the applications okay so uh, when we talk about everything all the stacks all the layers then it gives the concept of everything as a service okay so this is the only possibility which has made the cloud computing an interesting option for uh, actually reducing the startups uh, a capital investment cost in IT because uh, the startups can now focus on uh, increasing their business okay so they can quickly commercialize their idea they can go for uh, uh, virtualization they can go for virtual services they can opt for the services which they require right now they don't have to install anything on their side at their end uh, they can just start working uh, they can commercialize their idea, they can grow their infrastructure according to their revenues later on and by the time they can just start their business, they can concentrate on their business by just renting out for the cloud services. So this gives the um, concept of everything as a service where the customer can opt for the platform as well as infrastructure as well as software as a service okay so customer can rent out for everything he don't have to manage everything he don't have to install anything at its end okay so this is the beauty of everything as a service so uh, so uh, in the coming years now also lots of uh, companies are moving on cloud you could see various different service providers are there amazon is there and lots of products um, related to cloud computing are there from amazon google is there okay salesforce is there so all the companies are actually entering into cloud and they are providing the uh, efficient um, and good cloud services and solutions to the customers okay so um, so we have covered the layered architecture guys so uh, this is all about the layered uh, architecture okay so we have covered the layered cloud architecture we have seen the initial layer uh, starting from the hardware up to the software and the application layer we have seen the infrastructure as a service platform as a service and the software as a service so this is all about the layered cloud architecture design okay so uh, let's move on to the uh, next slide that uh, and the next topic so next topic is NIST cloud computing reference architecture so guys, what is NIST? NIST is National Institutes of Standards and Technology. Okay, so this um, NIST is actually an agency which is working a lot to develop the standards uh, in the cloud computing. Okay, and this agency is working a lot for the development as well as for the adoption of the cloud computing standards. Okay. So this uh, National Institutes of Standard Technology uh, gave a cloud computing reference architecture. Okay. So what is this architecture? Let's try to visualize it with the help of a diagram. So what this uh, cloud, uh, uh, cloud computing reference architecture given by NIST states. So this uh, particular architecture actually uh, uh, defines different uh, major actors and uh, the functions of all different actors. So here you could see the cloud consumer is there, cloud provider is there, cloud auditor is there, okay, cloud broker is there, cloud carrier is there. So all these are the different actors and they have different functions to perform, okay. So we will uh, one by one visualize uh, the um, different actors and what is their uh, functionalities and what uh, are the activities which they actually perform as their function. Like uh, what is the uh, work of cloud auditor? Uh, the work of cloud auditor is to perform the security audit, to perform the privacy impact audit, to perform the performance audit. Okay, What is the uh, 
work of the cloud provider the work of the cloud provider is to perform service orchestration what is service orchestration i will tell you later on um, and it also performs the resource abstraction and control layer uh, it performs the physical resource layer or the work of physical resource layer okay so um, and beside it it also perform the um, cloud service management it also sees the security and privacy why because service provider is the person or the organization that actually maintains a business relationship and um, which uh, actually um, make a service available to the interested parties so it is the any organization or the person or an entity which is managing everything to provide a customized customized service to the customers so this is the uh, backbone of any cloud computing uh, solution because we need someone who can provide the cloud computing solutions like the examples i gave you the amazon um, cloud service solutions google cloud service solutions salesforce and some other um, vendors are also there in the market okay so cloud uh, provider is that person or organization or entity which is responsible for making a service available to the interested parties okay so that is why it performs the uh, work of so it performs service orchestration it performs cloud service management it performs the security part it performs the privacy it takes care of the security of the client's data because uh, the client is actually putting everything on the cloud okay so um, client is even putting his sensitive data on the cloud so the vendors have to take care of the security issue it is one of the major concern uh, to consider the security aspects and to um, identify what are or what could be the security breaches uh, in the cloud environment and to give protection um, against all those um, uh, uh, problems and uh, uh, the security issues which can arise in the cloud environment to provide solution for that that is also the task of any uh, cloud provider okay security is uh, such a concept which is not uh, only um, related to the provider itself it is actually related to consumer also so um, consumer has to take care of the security part but provider has to employ good technologies and good tools to um, provide good uh, security solutions to the uh, users okay because user is actually trusting the um, con uh, provider and user is actually putting his uh, uh, sensitive information on the cloud okay so uh, the user will actually trust the vendor or the provider if he is actually using good technologies and tools to protect uh, the security and uh, to provide the security and protect uh, the important data of the client okay so the security and privacy are the uh, important major concern of any cloud provider okay then we have the cloud broker who actually uh, works uh, uh, to manage uh, the use performance and delivery of the cloud services and uh, cloud broker also negotiates the relationship between the cloud providers and the cloud consumers we then we have cloud carrier so uh, what is the use of this cloud carrier this cloud carrier actually works as an intermediary that uh, provides connectivity and it and transport of cloud services from cloud providers to the cloud consumers okay and cloud consumers are the people who are actually maintaining their business and they are actually using the services provided by the cloud providers okay so so these are the entities entities cloud consumers are there cloud auditors are there cloud providers are there cloud brokers are there and then we have cloud carriers so these are the major entities or actors which are actually provided uh, in the nist cloud computing reference architecture so these are major five actors in the nist cloud computing reference architecture okay and uh, we will one by one uh, try to understand their uh, functionalities and the services which uh, these actors are actually uh, performing uh, the activities which these major actors are performing will try to understand that okay
ओके गाइस सो लेट्स स्टार्ट विद द कंज्यूमर्स सो एज आई हैव टोल्ड यू कंज्यूमर्स आर द पीपल हु आर एक्चुअली यूजिंग द सर्विसेज व्हिच आर प्रोवाइडेड बाय द क्लाउड प्रोवाइडर्स एंड दीज आर द पीपल हु आर एक्चुअली रेंटिंग आउट द सर्विसेज दे आर पेइंग एंड दे आर रेंटिंग आउट द क्लाउड सर्विसेज दे कैन गो फॉर द इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर एज अ सर्विस और द प्लेटफॉर्म एज अ सर्विस और द software as a service okay so this diagram what this diagram is representing this diagram is actually representing the uh, example services which are available to the cloud consumers so here you could see the initially uh, and there are saas consumers the consumers who are opting for the software as a service then we have the consumers which are opting for the platform as a service we have consumers which are opting for the infrastructure as a service okay so uh, this examples for the uh, software are the some billing software auditing software sales software erp erp software okay some hr related software so all these are the uh, software which are just actually saas consumers uh are those um actually the people um, who are actually uh, opting for the applications and uh, renting out the applications and they are actually uh, providing those applications to be used by other uh, people who are working in the organization okay and these are the examples uh, of the uh, softwares or the applications which uh, could be provided as a service uh, by the service provider to the saas consumers okay and here uh, this these uh, past consumers are actually what they are doing they are actually uh, uh, developing uh, the um, software they are building the softwares okay and they are actually testing the softwares they are deploying the softwares okay uh, they are deploying uh, the softwares okay and they are testing some application so for that they require some platform okay so uh, these are the examples some business intelligence related uh, uh, platform if they require if they require the uh, platform for development and testing then they go they can go for platform as a service or if they require some database or for sort some deployment application deployment for some integration purposes okay so uh, these uh, particular Uh, represents the past consumers and their examples okay next we have infrastructure as a service consumer so um, infrastructure is like some hardware okay so if they require some cpus some computation power some storage some uh, storage for backup and recovery so so all these are the examples for the um, is infrastructure as a service solution okay so uh, the cloud consumers can go for uh, these uh, this these kind of services or they can go for these kind of services or they can go for infrastructure as a service solution okay so these are the example services available to the cloud consumer so for this diagram you could visualize what are the different kind of services which are actually provided to the um consumers and what they can opt for okay so either they can opt for all the three everything they can go for everything as a service or they can uh, go for some specific requirement uh, so they they can go for so for their specific requirement like if they require some application for the accounting purpose they can go for software as a service if they require some software for uh, building their application or some um, to run uh, or deploy uh then they can go for platform as a service or if they require some storage or some uh, computational power okay then they can go for infrastructure as a service solutions okay okay uh, next we have uh, the cloud provider so uh the next actor is the cloud provider so these are the major activities of any cloud provider service deployment service orchestration okay then cloud service management security and privacy okay these were also represented in the first diagram okay so uh, you could clearly see these uh, in the first diagram service orchestration cloud service management security privacy so all these are actually uh, mentioned here the service deployment service orchestration cloud service management security and privacy okay so what is the um, 
service deployment guys so what is service deployment when all the activities and organizations um, actually um, need to make a cloud service available for that they will require the service deployment okay so all of the activities the organization is actually needing for the cloud service to make av available for that purpose they will go for the service deployment they have to deploy the services so that it could be used by everyone okay next we have service orchestration so guys service orchestration actually refers what is the meaning of orchestration this orchestration refers to the arrangement coordination and management of cloud infrastructure to provide different cloud services to meet um, it and the business requirements okay and this uh, cloud service management this cloud service management includes all the service uh, related functions that are actually necessary for the management and operations of those services which are required by or which are proposed to the customers so what kind of services uh, this cloud service management is actually providing just have a look here so we have business support so we can view it from the perspective of the business support from the perspective of the provisioning and the configuring and from the provision of the um, portability and the interoperability okay so um so let's see this service orchestration is uh, actually uh, uh, in service orchestration we are just referring the arrangement and coordination and management of cloud infrastructure and in cloud service management we are including all the service related functions that are necessary for the management and operations of those services which are required by or proposed to the customers okay and security as i have told you it refers to the information security it means the protecting information and the information systems from unauthorized access from their use from their disclosure from their disruption from their modification from their destruction okay so to in order to provide the integrity in order to provide the confidentiality and in order to provide the availability the provider has to take care of all the security issues okay next is privacy so what is uh, privacy uh, here uh, the information privacy is uh, actually assured okay um, it means the users sensitive information and his privacy is assured it means the users important data is not be seen by any third party okay so for that what measures the um, provider is taking will be mentioned here okay and everything is actually written into the service level agreements so the security concerns and the <coughs> privacy concerns all these are actually uh, written into the uh, service level ag uh, agreements we call them slas so before going to the cloud services uh, read the uh, service level document very well to understand what are the uh, security um tools and techniques the company is uh, uh, employing in the cloud environment and everything so uh, the customer can refer the service level agreements for that purpose okay so this is all about the uh, cloud provider okay next uh, uh, we have the um service auditor we have the service auditor okay or cloud auditor sorry next we have the cloud auditor let's discuss the cloud auditor now so a uh, cloud auditor is a party that can perform independent examination of uh, cloud service controls with the intent to express an op opinion okay so what is the meaning of audit audit means to perform the examination okay so uh, the cloud auditor could perform the security auditing it can perform the privacy impact audit to actually check the confidentiality integrity and availability of any individual's personal information okay so all this is related uh, to the task which cloud auditor perform he can go for security audit or the privacy impact audit or the performance audit how uh, the uh, uh, what is the performance of the services which are provided by the uh, provider okay uh, so guys next we have the uh, cloud broker okay so what is uh, what are the activities and task of cloud broker so three important tasks are mentioned here service intermediation service aggregation service arbitrage okay so guys first of all in uh, and try to understand what is the um, use of cloud broker what is the uh, main uh, importance of cloud broker okay so guys as cloud computing is evolving the integration of cloud services can become too complex for cloud consumers to manage so a cloud consumer may request cloud services from a cloud broker in instead of directly contacting a cloud provider 
ओके दैट इज वाई अ क्लाउड ब्रोकर कम्स इन टू द पिक्चर एंड इट इज द वन दैट मैनेज द यूज परफॉर्मेंस एंड डिलीवरी ऑफ क्लाउड सर्विसेज एंड इट नेगोशिएट्स द रिलेशनशिप्स बिटवीन क्लाइड प्रोवाइडर्स एंड द क्लाउड कंज्यूमर्स एंड द इम्पॉर्टेंट टास्क विच दिस क्लाउड ब्रोकर परफॉर्म्स इज सर्विस इंटरमीडिएशन वॉट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ सर्विस इंटरमीडिएशन इट एक्चुअली इन्हांसिस अ गिवन सर्विस बाय इम्प्रूविंग सम स्पेसिफिक केपेबिलिटी एंड प्रोवाइडिंग वैल्यू एड सर्विसेज टू द क्लाउड कंज्यूमर्स ओके सो इट इज एक्चुअली improving uh, uh, the way uh, uh, the um, everything is being managed and the users can actually access the cloud services okay uh, so next is service aggregation what is service aggregation a cloud broker can combine and integrate multiple services into one or more new services okay and the uh, broker provides data integration it could integrate it and it ensures secure data movement between the cloud consumer and multiple cloud providers next is service arbitrage so the service arbitrage is actually similar to service aggregation except that the service being aggregated are not fixed okay here the service arbitrage means a broker has the flexibility to choose the services from multiple agencies it is not fixed you can choose from various different vendors and the cloud broker for example can use a credit a scoring service to measure and to select an agency with the best score okay so uh, service arbitrage is similar to service aggregation only difference is that uh, the services are not fixed okay next uh, you have uh, the cloud carrier so a uh, cloud carrier actually acts, acts as an intermediary and it provides connectivity and transport of cloud services between the cloud consumers to the cloud providers okay so that is the major task of the cloud carrier so this is all about the uh, nist cloud computing reference architecture so this is the reference architecture which are which was provided by the national institute uh, nist national institutes of standards and technology okay an agency which is focusing on the development and the usage or uh, and the building of the standards cloud computing standards okay and there are different five actors and their uh, functions and activities okay so that's it for today thank you